Hey guys, happy new year. I know this is not the first video I'm posting in the new year, but I record my videos ahead of time. And so it's the first one that I'm recording after the new year has started, if that makes sense. Anyway, happy new year. I'm going to be playing some cats today. So chess.com has released some new bots starting at uh, scaredy cat. Here is an 800. We've got angry cat is a 1000. Mr. Grumpers is 1200. Cat Sparov. 1400 and mittens they put the rating as one but it says mittens likes chess but how good is she we don't actually know so that'll be interesting that's going to be at the end let's go ahead and get started here with scaredy cat i'm going to choose this one and here we go all right so let's play e4 the french defense all right we're going to just keep it normal we're going to play d4 wow okay so why is this a bad move it's a bad move because it's going to cost black a tempo when I play the move c3. Now the bishop has to move or I'm just going to take it. All right, so it goes back there. We can set a little trap here. Uh, I think I will. This is maybe not the greatest idea, but it illustrates a, an important point. This is setting up the Noah's Ark trap in a weird way. So, okay, wow. So Scaredy Cat actually saw it. Uh, and I was trying to trap the bishop, but they created an escape route. So uh, we will abandon that plan at this point and just continue developing. But it's a kind of a clever way to, to potentially trap the bishop. Let's go bishop to d3. I'm thinking that if black castles, I'm going to try to set up something over here. d5, uh, I could just push and gain some space. I like the, the space that I have. Wow, h5. I'm not really scared of that. I'm still going to castle. I want my king to be out of the center. And so five okay because um this is kind of weakening of the king over here along this diagonal i think it makes sense to on passant this and open it up for my bishop if i don't it sort of locks everything up it's going to be hard to take advantage of that maybe i could still play knight to g5 and do something but i think it's going to be easier to attack the king if i just take it also also opens up the e-file and so there are a lot of reasons for that all right so Bishop can't quite go there yet because of the knight. So I think while I'm waiting for something to develop there, I'm just going to bring my rook to the center, start lining it up here, trying to get more and more of my pieces involved. Okay. So what do we have? Um, let's play b4. And what I'm trying to do is open up this for my bishop. Sorry, my bishop uh, to put some pressure here. I do have to be careful. There's a battery here, but my knight is doing a nice job defending that. And I don't see a, a way that black can immediately make my knight move. And so I, I'm okay there. So I'm going to play bishop to a3 and try to take advantage of this diagonal. So I'm threatening to play b5. So let's play b5. Now we unleash this attack. Queen to f4. Okay, so I could take this. But then what does that actually accomplish for me? I feel like we just need to keep developing at this point. So let's just bring my knight to d2. And all right, I'm just checking if there are any tactics here. I don't think so. I feel pretty safe. Um, but I will probably play knight to f1. That way I can, you know, if I need to block off the g file, I could play knight to g3. Also add an extra defender here. One thing I have to be careful for, this is a pin, uh, but the knight is defended by the queen. So I think we can be fine playing knight to f1. King to d7. Wow. All right. So... Let's just play queen e2 and, and line up on the e-pawn. Probably black's going to have to move back. Uh, I don't see really much else. Otherwise, I'm going to take... Oh, yeah. See, I'm going to just take this now. And looks like we have check... Do we have checkmate? Bishop here. The knight takes. The queen takes a checkmate. If the king moves... Mm, it's super close. I could also just take this. And then play there. Yeah, that's checkmate. There we go. So I take this guy. Queen over here should be checkmate. All right, so Scaredy Cat uh, tried their best. Let's move on to Angry Cat. Okay, here we go. Scandinavian, I'm going to take it. All right, let's play Knight C3. We'll see if we can play a trap if the... Oh, Queen E5. Everybody's playing this move these days. I don't feel like it's very good for black, but we'll play Bishop E2. Okay, let's play Knight to F3. So I'm gaining some tempo on the Queen. And I'm just going to keep developing. So we'll go ahead and castle. Bishop e6. I don't like that move from black's perspective because it blocks in this bishop. So this bishop's not getting out anytime soon. Uh, let's go ahead and play d4. I'm going to get this bishop out. Let's see. 
So whenever you see pieces like this, you want to look if you have tactics available. So I was looking if I have like a fork. Black does have enough pieces covering it, uh, so I don't quite have it. But that's kind of what I'm thinking about. So maybe we can play bishop g5 to potentially take this followed by d5, which would fork the pieces. Yeah, so I think now, if I'm not mistaken, I can win a piece here. Now there's going to be castling, which puts the pin on my pawn. So that could be a problem, although I have bishop d3. Yeah, I think that's going to work. So I'm going to take this. And the point is I want to follow up with d5 and win a piece. And if black castles or brings the rook to d8, Oh, he took with the queen. I was going to play bishop d3. Now I don't have bishop d3. So can black save the position by doing that? Maybe they can. I can get quite a few pieces for it. So I might still consider that. Although maybe it makes sense to do something else instead. Yeah, I'm just going to play rookie one. I'm not going to go for that because because of the, the fact that yeah, but the rook over actually stops what I was trying to do. So let's play knight to e4. Gain some more tempo on the queen. Okay, um, let's see. Probably I'm going to move this bishop somewhere. Am I losing this check? No, I don't think I am. So we'll play bishop d3. I, I have a little tactic here if black tries to go for this. Yeah, so I'm going to take it. And then I have a discovered check here, which is going to win the rook. So there we go. All right, we can take this guy. F5. Yeah, I didn't see that, actually. I didn't see that. Probably should have followed that through a little bit. Let's see if we can figure out a way to get out of this mess. And I do actually see a tactic. So it's a tricky position because it looks like if I move the knight, I'm losing my queen, right? However, if I move the knight with check, then black can't take my queen. They have to do something about my knight. This one, the queen would take it, which is not what I want. But this one, one of the pawns would have to take, and then I simply take black's queen. So there we go. I got a little bit lucky, you could say there. I didn't actually calculate that move, but it turns out that uh, tactically it works nicely for me. All right, now we can probably just start taking stuff. Black's position is a mess. And dropping pieces, here we go. We'll just um, take this one. Probably bring the rook up and over, and I think we can get a fairly quick checkmate here. Okay, let's go here. Let's go here. So this rook can come down this way. King's cut off over here. Do we have checkmate? Um, so I'm going to sacrifice the rook just because I want to go ahead and clear, clear up things. Sometimes when you're ahead, a lot of material, the simplest and easiest way to just win the game is to just, even if you have to sacrifice a piece, go ahead and do it. It clears things up. And then you can get the checkmate. All right. So that was Angry Cat. And let's go to the next one. Mr. Grumpers, 1200. Okay. Sicilian. Um, you know what? I will play this B4 line. We'll mix it up a little bit. This is one of the lines that I that I teach in my course. If you guys have, have seen my, uh, basically my repertoire for white as E4 players. This is one of the, the lines that I recommend. Now, it doesn't look like Mr. Grumpers is going to accept it, which is too bad. It's a lot of fun when they accept it. We take with the rook, and it gets pretty interesting. This is weird. Um, I mean, I can't take it because of my rook, but I don't really know what this move is all about. Probably we can just... Um, I mean, I could play d4. I don't really care about that because I have c3. So yeah, I guess I will play d4. It looks a little bit scary, but I see that I have a nice follow-up, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, we'll play... We'll play bishop d3, I guess. Okay, so now he goes for the check. I could play c3, or I could play... Uh, let's see, we could block the check somehow. Let's see, what happens if we play bishop d2... Does that actually... Hold on a second. So I'm, I'm wondering if bishop d2 can win a piece. The point is, I, if the queen moves, I'm going to take the bishop. The only thing I'm worried about is what happens after the pawn takes here. I take with the queen. Yeah, I guess we don't actually win a piece. 
So should I play c3 is the question. Hmm. Interesting uh, position. This pawn's pretty weak, so I can pretty much take that whenever I want. So yeah, I guess we should play c3. I, I, I really was hoping I could win a piece, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. All right. I think we need to go ahead and castle, get the king out of the center. And then I'll probably go ahead and take this pawn back. Seems like it might be a good time to do that. So let's play knight here, threatening to take this guy. And we'll go ahead and take that one. Queen a4. Okay, if I go here, I like the fact that I'm getting the bishop. I don't like that my pawns are going to be really messed up. Really messed up if I do that. So I think I will just retreat. Okay, h5. Very weird position. Um, maybe rook b1 to attack this. I'd like to play f4, f5 and try to create some counterplay here. So I think I might just move my knight. I have to go back because I can't go here because of the bishop. But I really want to do this and get to the king. If black's not going to castle and just do stuff like this, it seems like the best thing to do is to try to attack the king. So let's see if we can do that. Yeah, they're stopping me. Unless I'm wanting to sacrifice that pawn, which is not out of the question. It's not out of the question. Let's bring the knight back. Now that we've had the pawn up there, we want the knight to get off the back rank. Let's go to g5. I'm, I'm seeing some potential uh, sacrifice ideas here. Okay, I'm probably just going to kick that knight away. I can go back. And yeah, I think I can take here, then come in with the queen. King's going to go here. I at least get two pawns and I play f5. It looks like it's going to lead to a nice attack. I am going to do that. There are other ways I could approach it, but I'm, I'm going to do that one. I'm just trying to get to the king and this seems like the best way to do it. So we're going to go here. We can either take this next or if king there, we're going to probably play f5. Or take this and get three pawns. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just, I might be sacrificing too many pieces if I do this. That's my only concern. Because it looks like the king might actually escape over there. Eh, let's, let's do it. We have to be aggressive, I think, and, and see what happens. Okay, so we need to get these guys into the game for sure. It, yeah, it's probably not a, probably wasn't the greatest sacrifice, but we're going to go with it and uh, see what we can do. Let's play bishop f4. Continuing to attack, threatening e6. Okay, we'll play e6, check. I'm not sure where the king's going to go now. Yeah, back here, okay. So, check here. Check. That looks good. That looks pretty good. The only question is what happens after the king moves there. Oh, I have bishop check. I have bishop check. Okay. Because I was worried that I was going to have two pieces under attack. Right? The queen's attacking my rook. The rook's attacking my queen. But I have this nice move. And the point is that if the knight takes me, I'm going to win the queen. If the knight doesn't take me and the king moves, then I'm going to probably take this guy with check. And so bishop e5 is a nice move. And here we go. We can take the queen. So it worked out. Maybe it wasn't the, the most sound sacrifice, but in the end, uh, we we're coming out on top. So <clears throat> um, let's push this. If the bishop goes there, I have queen c7. Okay, he didn't go for that. Let's... We're going to activate the rook here. We'll bring the queen down. We're threatening d6. There we go. And I think black is in trouble. Okay. Oh, he's going to take my pawn. Um, we'll go check. We'll try to get the knight to come in. Let's go here. 
threatening queen here. I'm threatening the knight. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much for black to handle. I think knight g5 just leads to checkmate. I don't believe black can stop that, so we'll play knight to g5. Next move, we will go here. All right, Mr. Grumpers. So I think uh, we just... Oh, we have Katsparov. That's right, Katsparov. Okay. All right, Katsparov, let's go. Okay. I'll play bishop c4. This is another one of the lines that I cover in the course. d4. This is the uh, Urasov Gambit. That's correct. And then uh, knight to f3. Mm-hmm. Queen takes d4. This is one of the common lines. Usually the knight goes back. Yep. Knight c3, bishop g5 is kind of the idea. I'm not sure if... I'm not sure if it matters which one you start with. Knight to c6. Let's go over to h4. This is one, kind of the, one of the ideas. You swing the queen over here and you can actually attack black if they ever castle. So d5. Wait a second. What happens if I take it? All right, we'll do that. Because the queen can't take, so the knight has to take, but then I can uh, actually trade these guys and take the knight. And I think this is a pretty pretty nice end game. It's pretty equal, but looks pretty good for, for me. Okay, let's go here. I, I'm gaining a tempo by attacking the bishop. I'm also dealing with the threat and centralizing my knight, giving it a lot of options. Okay, so I could castle and get the rook over, or I could try to bring the bishop out first and then castle queenside, and then I actually get both rooks lined up which I kind of like. I think my king would be safe both ways. Uh, the question is, do I have a good square for the bishop? Probably bishop f4 looks pretty solid. So we'll go here. Notice how my bishops are just like attacking everything. c6, probably a pretty good move. I don't really want to go here because I'm just hitting that. I think it's going to be more effective on this diagonal. So let's go back to b3. Keep the pressure there. Okay, let's castle queenside. And now you can see I immediately get this rook into the game and I have basically one more rook move and then all my pieces are looking great. I'm trying to see if it makes sense to go here uh, and be annoying. I don't think so. I think I'll just continue developing. And this is, this is great. Everybody is doing something. Now it's a question of what are the weakest spots in black's position and how can I take advantage of that? So I think this looks like a very big weakness. Black can't castle. Or I take the bishop. The bishop can't move because it's pinned. And so bishop to d6 or bishop to g5 seem like very good moves. Now, <clears throat> what I'm thinking about is what is black going to do if I play one of these moves? Probably they have to deal with this by blocking. So probably a knight or a bishop is going to go to e6. I have one. I have two. I have three pieces. So I could take the knight. I could take the bishop. I, I would win a pawn. That looks pretty good. The question is, does it matter where my bishop is? And I don't think it does. It seems like maybe g5 is a little bit better, uh, but it really, I mean, probably doesn't matter. So we'll go to g5. I, I do have to be careful that I'm putting myself into a check now that I think about that, actually. Because black could at any moment sort of throw in that check, and that could be a problem now that I think about it. So maybe I will go here, actually, instead. Okay, because of that, I don't want it to be on a, a piece, on a square that's hanging it with check. Because see, now I can just take here. I don't have to worry. If you imagine the same trade here, but my bishop is over here, I wouldn't be able to take this pawn or he's going to hit me with check. Now I'm, I'm not worried about this, right? So that's a kind of a big difference. So I'll take this. And yeah, black's in trouble now. So if we take here, the rook's going to come up and defend. If we take here, then we get a discover check. So this way is better. This also looks like a good move. But I think this is probably just the simplest. Yep. So this is the this is what I was talking about. Discovered check. And so black doesn't have time to take me back. They have to move their king. But they can't move their king over there because the rook. So I'm winning a piece. Which makes this a very easy, uh, easy game to win. All right. And so now we can just probably trade some stuff. Um, and shouldn't be, have too much trouble. We'll trade a pair of rooks. We will come 
maybe back to C4. Probably going to block off the D file here and start bringing my king into the game. Okay, we don't want to lose a pawn for no reason. Although, if he took this, it would force a trade, which would be a very easy win. So maybe I could play a random move and see if black is going to go for that. Set a little trap. Okay, he did fall for it. And the reason I'm doing this is once the rook is gone, my bishop is going to be so powerful against all the pawns uh, that it, it just becomes very easy. So I think this makes a lot of sense. Just activate my king and take the pawns is what it comes down to. So we'll go check. We will go g3. A lot of times you want to put your pawns on the opposite color of your bishop. And the reason for that is um, <clears throat> if like if you imagine if black push keeps pushing their pawns, they end up on white squares where my bishop can attack them. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. And I don't want to trade off everything. I want to be make sure I'm very careful and I leave some pawns remaining. Because if I trade every single pawn, uh, the game is a draw, right? So I'm not going to do that. But there's still three. That's plenty. And uh, yeah, I mean, black can't do anything because the, the bishop is too strong. So here we go. I'll take this guy. Yeah, you can see what I'm talking about here. Now these are very easy targets for my bishop. Not that I need it because I have this guy. But if it was a closer game, um, you know, I'm not even going to let the king come in there. I'm just going to start pushing this guy. Let's come up and we'll come over here probably and take these guys. And it's pretty easy from here. So after this, we just have mittens and we have no idea what mittens rating is. So that'll be interesting. All right. Is it going to be a stalemate if I get a queen? No, it's not. It's check. So it's fine. That's the only risk that I have. Um, we'll go check here. And we can bring the bishop in. You want to make sure when you're when you have a lot of extra pieces, you want to make sure that your opponent's king has a square to move to. So I'm planning on going here, and I see that the king can actually move to both of these squares. It's totally fine. It's not a stalemate, so I'm I'm good to do that. And then I have checkmate wherever he goes. Okay. Good game, Katsparov. Here we go, folks. The last bot is Mittens. I have no idea what Mittens rating is. Um, meow, I like chess. Okay, so this might not end well for me, but... Uh, <laughs> meow, I am Mittens. I am become Mittens, the destroyer of kings. Okay. Playing the French. Um, we'll play d4. I don't really like playing against the French. It's not one of my better openings, but I'm going to give it my... Sh okay. So this is the winner. I'm going to play queen d3. This is another one of my lines that I really like to play. I take with the queen. Yes, I lose a tempo, which at first glance is like, what are you doing? But it has a re has an idea behind it. The idea is I'm coming over to h4. And we've seen this before in some of the other lines that I like to play. I, it's a very aggressive approach, and it kind of prevents black from castling. I mean, they can castle. But if they do, they're going to get attacked. That's the, the point. So c5. Do I trade it or do I just defend it? I guess we'll just defend for right now. Develop a piece, defend. And we'll take it back with the knight. And black, okay, black is going to castle. All right, so we're going to see what I'm talking about here. Uh, I'm going to play bishop to d3, and I have a checkmate threat. So black has to watch out for that. The knight is obviously defending. I guess he's trying to push it all the way on me. Um... See, I wonder if I can ignore this and just play bishop g5. Because if the pawn takes, I'm taking the knight, which looks very good for me. Because of the checkmate threat. Now, is it good enough? Oh, I don't know, because there's rookie a check, which is a bit scary. I'm going to go for it. We're going to go aggressive on mittens. Um, oh, queen d4. Well, that still just leads to a big trade. So I think it's fine. We take here. We take here. It's not exactly what I want to do because I can't really attack the king now. We have to play an endgame. Or my pawn structure is messed up. 3-6, three, 3-6. Six, three, six. But it's pretty even. I do have the bishop pair. This is the only thing that's really bad about my position. So 
Interesting. All right. Well, we'll see how we'll see how this is going to turn out. Big question is where do I want my king? I feel like it's close enough to the end of the game that king to d2 makes a lot of sense. Helps my pawns. Only thing I'm worried about is a rook here, but I think it's worth it. You know, normally you want a castle because your king is safer, but this is going to be an end game. In the end game, you want your king to help out. And so I think king d2 is probably the best move here. So we'll go king to d2. Yeah, he's just solidifying his pawn structure there. My bishop over here is is not awesome. But I think I am going to go... I think I'm going to go back and try to play f4 and sort of open things up here. I don't want my bishop to be stuck not doing anything. So let's play f4. He's going for this pawn. So it seems like a good move, actually. Um, rook to e1 threatens this guy. And then I could come over here if I need to. If he takes me, I'm losing a pawn. It's not ideal. Okay. Let's play rook to b1 to create a counterattack. I want to see how black defends this. B6. Okay, so it maybe creates a weakness on the knight. Which I can use to my advantage. Um, I don't... I hate to play a move like rook g1. I really do. But I might have to. Let's trade here first. And then we might have to play rook g1. Let's see. What's the alternative? I can go here with the idea that I would like to play rook to e2. It's a much better way to defend the pawn because I also have my rook involved this way. The only thing is what happens after this. Takes, takes, takes. There's also this guy hanging. I just noticed that. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, we're going to try it. We're going to go for trying to activate our pieces. Um, but we might just be losing too many pawns here. I guess we're only going to lose one pawn. Uh, okay. If I can get the rook to the seventh, it's it's actually maybe not so bad. So let's go here. And then we'll follow up the rook to e7. I think we get at least some counterplay. We have some active pieces now. We're only down a pawn. Ah, uh, that's a good move because it defends everything. See, I can't take this or I'm losing... Uh, I'm losing my rook. That's the problem. Yeah, that's a problem. And I'm also losing this pawn. That's not good. Man, so I guess I have to go back, unfortunately. So we're going to try to hold on. Mittens seems like a strong player uh, from what I'm seeing here. So let's play d4. We'll just try to hold on for a draw here. I think we should be able to because the bishops are opposite colored. But it's not going to be easy. We'll just try to make a blockade, essentially. And I don't know um, how black is going to get through. I want to move this pawn so it's not a liability any longer. Let's play h4, and then we'll put it on g3. Yeah, so we pretty much have a blockade here. I don't think black can really get through. Uh, let's go here. Trying to attack this guy. If I push it, I have to be careful that it doesn't become a target. If I don't push it, I have to find a new home for my bishop. Yeah, my bishop would actually get trapped. So we can move the rook somewhere and bring the bishop back here, maybe. Or we could play h5 and just try to defend the pawn when it gets attacked. Hmm. I don't actually know. This is uh, this is tough. Let's go back here, I guess. I, I don't want my bishop to get trapped, so I want to give it a place to go. Okay, we can take this. Okay. Can't really do much. Let's go here. Maybe we can trade. 
Eesh. Rook's coming in. It's definitely not pleasant for me, but I'm trying to hold on anyway. Wow. Um, not good. All right, let's go here. What happens if I go back and forth? What is what is black going to do? That's the question. Bring the king up? Yeah. Yeah. I can't really do anything. I could go here and attack the pawn. He wants to do this. I have to go back. Yeah, once the king gets up here, I'm in trouble, I think. I think I am in trouble. We obviously can't go here or we lose the rook, so we have to go here. Oof. All right. It feels like, yeah, my bishop's trapped. Wow. It feels like Mittens is, is a strong cat. I, I don't know what the rating is, though, so I, I have no idea. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm lost. Okay. Bishop's gone. I can't save it. All right. Well, we tried. I'm going to resign. Let me, I'm going to actually go do some research, see if I can find what the rating is of mittens. Although I think chess.com is keeping it a secret, so it might not be out there. Let me see if I can find it. All right. So I did some research, and a lot of people are saying that maybe mittens is rated like 3,000 or above, uh, like very, very strong. So I don't know. Um, but it seems like it's very, very good. So if you've beaten Mittens, uh, I would be curious to hear how you did it. Uh, because it seems like it's it's basically Stockfish or something like that. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you next time. And if you want to play against the cat bots, I'll put a link in the description uh, to take you over to the computer, uh, the bots on chess.com. All right, guys, stay sharp, play smart, take care.